Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Kershaw Cryo. So stay tuned. The Kershaw Cryo is a extremely popular knife. And the reason why is because it's a Rick Hinderer. And I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but whatever. It's a Rick Hinderer um design knife and his knives are extremely expensive absolutely not cheap but you could go ahead and get one that's designed by him this knife right here for the unbelievable low price of 30 dollars that's right right now on amazon i'm looking right here 30 bucks i paid 40 dollars at dicks for this particular one so um extremely impressive now there are going to be things about this knife that some folks out here in the knife community will not like but um uh, i'm telling you for the price this is um i understand why this is so popular um it's a kershaw it has a uh, great warranty the company definitely stands behind its products the uh packaging real quick there's the back there's the front. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and we'll start taking a closer look. Rick Hinderer was not only a, or is not only a famous knife designer, but he was also a firefighter and EMT. So if he happens to be watching this video, <laughs> which I highly doubt, he, uh, I, I thank you for your service very much. So let's go ahead and take out the knife, knife protector here and see what we got so first of all I'd like to start by classifying the knife and this one falls squarely as a EDC it's a very strong EDC I might add because it's a it's a frame lock and it's uh, definitely just uh, built like a tank now this is also an assisted opener it uses the Kershaw um, trademark speed safe design. <laughs> so uh, speed safe, I think uh, the way that they do it is there, there's a spring all wound up around the pivot in there. They don't use a torsion bar of any sort. And like I said, 30 to $40, I put that up front because I know a lot of people just don't like to listen to my long videos. They just want to know how much it costs and get out of my video and, and go buy the product, right? <laughs> anyway, the overall dimensions of this is 6.5 inches when open and when closed, it is three and three quarters inches and the weight is 4.1 ounces. So it's a it's a hefty knife. Uh, and that's because every, it's all stainless steel. Now, uh, this is the first time I'm flipping it open. So you could use either the flipper right here. You can see there's a flipper right there, or you could use the thumb studs. Uh, I prefer the flipper of the two. Ooh, that thing almost flew out of my hand. Okay, so the blade itself is a drop point design and very pointy. It's two and three quarter inches. So it's under three inches. So I know a lot of people are happy about that because of their local uh slash state laws the blade material here's where people are going to get just a little bit um teed off about the whole thing but keep in mind this is a you know 30 to 40 dollar knife here it is 8 cr 14 mov now hey there, there are other companies that are using this to make their um value price knives it's not just kershaw i think uh Spiderco started doing it a long, long time ago, but um, it's an equ it's an equivalent to OS 8A steel, which is a very good middle middle of the the pack kind of steel. The only thing you need to be careful about is the corrosion resistance, but this has a really nice coating on it, so that shouldn't be a problem. The coating is a titanium carbonitrate, so it's some sort of um, um, tinny you know, type of finish. And that finish is also on the handles or on the scales, whatever you want to call it. The scale material 
on this knife is 410 stainless steel. But everything looks the same because it all has that same coating on it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you. Just do a uh, quick flyby real close so you can get a real close look right there. And uh, if you notice, this is a Rick Hinderer type thing right here. As you can see, this is a frame lock, so it's a very, very strong lock. The only thing that I consider stronger than a frame lock is a, you know, a back lock. So what Rick Hinderer has done, and I believe he has this copyrighted or trademarked or whatever, is he puts this little um, frame lock stabilizer right here. And what that does is it prevents you from overextending this frame lock outward any further because of that washer around that screw right there. Really ingenious design and it also looks nice. The blade is hollow grind to about two thirds up so you have a flat area here to mount uh, sharpening devices, you know knife sharpening or blade sharpening devices and it's a plain edge all the way down. You get a little sharpening choil right there so you don't have to worry about ruining the shoulder of the knife or and or your sharpening stone. Um, and again the deployment was either with that flipper or the thumb studs and you could see that it has pyramid style thumb studs completely ambidextrous for both left-handed and right-handed folks. Now speaking of left-handed and right-handed folks the mounting of the clip. Let's, let me uh, go ahead and close this real quick and you can see that the clip comes all the way up out of the box it is tipped down but you could go ahead and remove these two uh, torque screws right here on each side and mount it for tip up carry now left-handed folks you have the same options up you know up or down tip tip up tip down kind of carry so this is four point mount system for your clip really really nice so let me see if I left every anything out. I really don't think I have. So the only other thing, <laughs> it's it's made in China, but um, you know it, if the company does very good quality control, then you're going to get a good knife out of China. Now if you just let them just make knives for the, the cheapest they can, then you're going to get the typical Chinese junk. This is not typical Chinese junk, and um, you know I mean iPhones come from China and they definitely ain't junk so I'm not going to diss them but I don't like how you know people ask me why I I diss things made in China and that and there's a couple of reasons uh, if, if the company doesn't do good quality control you just let them do it for the cheapest possible it's going to be junk number two they're paying the the wages of the people building this stuff is like slave wages and it, it's you know, and we're sort of supporting that by buying the products. Uh, you know, it's a lot of people's opinion. So, you know, with that in mind, that that's why a lot of people, including myself, sometimes will diss um, Chinese-made products. Now, it looks like there are some brass phosphorus washers down in there. If you can look really close, so really nice. There's the stop pin. You can see it right there, which keeps the knife. You can see how that stop pin. Once it focuses, it will stop the blade from traveling up any further. And you can see the frame lock under, under there sort of pop out. And you can see the, the classic Rick Hinderer design handle right here. Really nice. And even though my hand is a little bit bigger than this handle, it still feels very, very comfortable. Now, as far as if you do stab with this, you have the flipper part comes down. And, and ends up here almost forming like a finger choil right in here to prevent your hand from sliding and you also have some very nice jimping right here it's um it's kind of rounded but it you know you could see that it does sort of help a little bit you can see me pulling that knife in and out a little bit so it, it is functioning somewhat you also have some jimping here now let's see how it feels in a reverse grip very comfortable even with my large hands you can see right there. So it, it's comfortable all around. It's not the most comfortable, but it, it's very practical and it's there's definitely nothing that's poking my hand or making it feel uncomfortable in any way. So let's go ahead and proceed with the tests.
first let's look at blade centering and you could see that blade centering is almost exactly dead on accurate let's look at blade retention okay the best way to get it out is since the blades here is to sort of try to flip it like that and it definitely doesn't come out let's see you know it has that speed assist assisted opening so it it, look, it almost feels like about you know somewhere around 20 to 30 degrees is when it whew, starts wanting to come out i almost sliced myself right there so um pay attention don't do that <laughs> or you'll cut yourself Okay, next is lockup and engagement. I'm going to use the thumb studs this time. The uh, lockup, there feels like there may be a slight, very slight bit of side to side. And there is no up and down, so that can be adjusted out of it with the Torx um, pivot screw right there. No problem. And speaking of Torx, there is uh, many other Torx here. It's a pillar des open pillar design, so dirt will flow through it really easy. Um, one other thing to note while I have the knife here up to the camera is this huge lanyard hole. Uh, you could easily put 550 cord through there, so really nice. Next, we'll go ahead and test the sharpness out of the clamshell packaging. And we'll go, ooh, um, that is uh, push cutting right there. That is extremely sharp. Wow. Okay, I am very, very impressed. There, there's nothing holding this knife back. It is just cutting this like butter. That's incredible. This might be the sharpest knife um, out of the box this year for me. That is incredible. Wow. Okay, so that's extremely sharp. Next is my wood stabbing test. Happen to have some very soft pine here. You know, this is an EDC. You're not really going to be doing too much standing, but we want to make sure that the, uh, the heat treatment was done properly on here and the point doesn't break off. Um, typically, um, this type of steel, the 8C or 14 MOV, should be somewhere uh, between 58 and 59 on the HRC uh, scale. So we'll go ahead and, and you can see I'm really getting it in there enough. So, you know, about a quarter of an inch into that wood there. And I'm doing this just to make sure that the tip doesn't easily just break and it doesn't. It's intact. So it held up well and you can see that none of the coating came off either. So pretty good durable coating. What do we have next? Um, mm -hmm. Ergonomics. I think we already sort of touched on ergonomics um, again. Not the best in the world. You know, if I had to rate it um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably, you know, give it a 7. It's not super duper duper comfortable, but again, that's uh, something that's very personal. You know, it depends on your hand and what you like. So, you know, I don't hit it unless it has something grossly bad, like something poking into your head when you're holding it. So, um, again, just a, a real close look at everything right there. Really a beautiful knife. Rick Hinder is just, I could see why he is a very successful designer. And if I ever make a lot of money one day, I will definitely buy some of his knives. But for now, this has to do. And that's what one of the pros are of this knife. You could have a Rick Hinder design knife for the unbelievable low price of $30 to $40. That is the biggest pro about this knife. Um, other, other pros... Besides, you know, that high value is it feels like it's built like a tank. It's solid. Um, it, it's probably pretty close to a perfect EDC if you're looking for a smaller sub 3 inch EDC. I prefer larger usually, but um, if I do carry want to carry something smaller than 3 inch, this is it. This absolutely is it. Um, as far as cons are concerned... Um, well, out of the box, there's just a teeny bit of side-to-side -side play, um, but that easily can be adjusted with the pivot screw. And um, I, I, I'll tell you, I can't really think of any other thing, any other con. that uh, There's nothing um, not to like about this knife. It really is incredible. So I am going to give this a, yep, 10 out of 10. I love this knife. I can see why it is extremely popular. So 10 out of 10. You know, the only 
other possible con. I, I hate not coming up with any cons because I'm super critical. I want to make sure <laughs> that I'm covering everything. Is it, it does have a little bit of weight to it for a small, you know, a smaller EDC. But I, I to me, weight equates to build quality for some reason. I know it, it's not the case. So here's the deal. I'm going to um, right now. My longtime favorite EDC has been this American lawman and um i'm gonna put this aside for a little while by the way it's made by by cold steel and I, i'm gonna be carrying this for a while i just really um like it a lot i really do so um I, i'm uh, yeah i think i'm gonna long term carry this guy around um okay well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you. And I hope you have a great evening. Take care.